I like to call this uh, August 21st council work session and regular council meeting to order. Uh, we have a couple people in the public. I'm going to start with public participation. So anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything during public participation? Anybody on this side of the room want to speak on anything public participation? Okay, that ends public participation. That was easy enough. Ooh. All right, Michael, I know Michael Gorman's here tonight from Design Works with the Popes who want to introduce us to somebody that's uh, putting in a bakery in Bristol Borough. So, Michael, why don't you go to the podium and bring whoever you want. With you. Hi, Michael Gorman, uh, 324 Radcliffe Street. Um, I just wanted to... I thought it would be a good idea to come with uh, new um, business members that are coming to Mill Street and Pond Street. They reached out to everybody on the street to let us know what was going on. And I just thought maybe they could take a brief moment just to introduce themselves. Um, the first is Sergio and Angeline. Uh, Angela, she's going to, they're going to be opening Angelina's Bake Shop on Mill Street on the 300 block. And secondly, um, but not second, is uh, Chuck's uh, Barbecue. Uh, they purchased the um, ice cream uh, shop, and they're going to be doing barbecue and soft serve ice cream uh, out of Texas. Uh, they're going to have like a whole line of rubs and sauces and things like that. So, Sounds and great. also. Awesome. Chuck um, is, is the look, theirs is going to take a little bit more because of the involvement, but they're, they've also uh, joined an, onto the Lions, and they're going to have a um, a booth down at the line, at the uh, Italian festival, so oh, they'll be able great. to taste it. So if they could do that, and then I just okay. have one little thing afterwards. Okay. Awesome. Who wants to go first? Hello, everybody. I'm Sergio. I'm here on behalf of Angelina's Bake Shop. Uh, named after my wife, who her name is Angela. She's a frequent member here on Mill Street and at the King George. Um, I'm excited to open up the bake shop. Uh, it was been planned for a while. I actually wanted to, back in 2012, where Calm Waters is, was to buy that place and open up there. But I had just bought a new house at the time, and my wife said too much. Um, the bake shop is going to be a full bake shop. It's going to be baking right on the premises. So we will have fresh donuts, uh, pastries, pies, cakes, and even bread. Um, our hours we'd like to incorporate will be from 5 o'clock in the morning to at least 10 o'clock at night. Wow. And hopefully, um, with the hours that we want to incorporate into the borough that other stores will either get open a little earlier and stay open a little later and help people come. Because that was one thing I noticed that some stores were closing up a little too early or weren't opening up. But I think with, with that kind of set of hours, that might really help with people coming and coming into, into the borough there, especially on Mill Street. And I'm on 312. So there's a, the eatery just opened up, and they're doing really good. Um, Bill Pezza was a big help to us because he posted just a picture of the sign on his Facebook thing, and it was over 400 some comments, and then I don't know how many likes. So I think it's going to be a real good thing there. I'm hoping to have a line outside the door every day. Well, everybody in town has been saying Talking that the town it. needs a bakery, and yeah. they're very excited about it. So if you have, if I don't know if you've ever heard of Yum Yum Donuts. They're on Street Road. Yes. Well, our our is similar to that 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 well, you're texture. Better, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait to see what Philadelphia says who's the best donut. But we do more than just donuts. So, and we are pro incorporating probably gluten free because that is a big thing now, and people will drive miles upon miles away to get a good gluten gluten free product. Good. So. It's good to know. Good luck to you. Uh, Thank you. I'm hoping to open by December. Uh, that's my goal is to open by December oh, before nice. Christmas. Yeah. So it's a festive occasion and I hope it works out. Sir, I think it will. We wish Sir, you a lot of Thank you for coming to our town. Thanks for Thank you.
Hi everyone, I'm Chuck from Chuck's Barbecue from Two Pond Street. I just purchased the ice cream place that was there. So <clears throat> I plan on doing barbecue for you guys, every, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, bringing uh, something new to the, to the borough and using as much local business as I can. So I'm going to need a bunch of buns. <laughs> so uh, I plan on doing the Italian Fest, like Mike said, and getting my food out there so we can get a taste of it and see what I got to offer. And uh, I just look forward to working with everyone. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's really good to know that we have a lot of people investing in our town right yeah. now. And, you know, you can't come in at a better time. I mean, I, the town is on fire right now. So hopefully everything that we keep adding, pieces to this puzzle, just keeps getting better. And I want to thank Michael because I know he's – one of the driving forces behind this also. Thank you, so, Mike. And also the third really involved. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just have a couple things. I just wanted to give everyone an update with Raising the Bar Power Washing. As of tonight, it will be finished. Uh, we've done um, the half blocks of Pond all the way down um, Mill Street across Radcliffe and half up market, like a quarter way up market. I saw it today. So I'm just hoping that all the, the businesses will see now that there's no weeds or trash if they could just stay on it. We're hoping that they do. And of course, keep the lights on. That's been our slogan. Try to keep the lights on. It looks so nice uh, being lit up. Like Motel 6, right? Yeah, there. exactly. <laughs> keep the lights on, and I know. <laughs> the, the, um, one, <laughs> <laughs> Could you edit that? <laughs> and then one other thing, I just want to remind everyone about the viewing party, September 28th for uh, Revolution. Uh, it's going to be at St. Mark's School. Uh, I know Bill has posted that <coughs> online uh, about more like the pricing, and there's going to be refreshments and hors d'oeuvres and things like that. Um, and I think that's it. Lastly, um, with all this going on in town, and you know, there's been a lot of people walking up Mill Street that I see during the day, and then still living uh, part-time on Radcliffe Street. Um, I've got a lot of people asking uh, if, if there's a reason, um, what the reason is, or whatever, if, if um, the access, the river access on Mulberry Street, there's a sign that says no river access. I was just wondering if that's something that the borough would consider like possibly looking at and opening up to allow people to access that. And that's a wonderful idea. And we would also do whatever it takes have people that's um, besides uh, people that said that they would help fund to make to beautify it. Okay. Another thing that might happen there is if, if that's taken down, maybe perhaps additional parking could be placed there because of the the, living on Radcliffe Street, the, the um, fact that maybe perhaps they lost a parking spot, this would add some more parking there. So just the oh. thought of something you would consider. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, and what happened there, why that sign went up was kids were swimming in there and then they were climbing up one of the private owner's fences. And his insurance says, hey, they're hanging on your fences, they fall off your fence, you're going to get sued. So they, they, they try to stop those two people there from being sued. Okay. That's what that sign's all about. Because kids or people uh, hang on that fence to get up and down. Right. So, uh, well, maybe first, first of all, signage. let me let me just first of all, the sign I agree, the sign should come down because it's public property, just like at the moose. I mean, you know, anybody can go down there and use it. Uh, Maybe we could put a fence across the top of it with some gates or something to dress it up. And I, you know, I, I heard you say that you'd be interested in maybe raising some money. But Absolutely. is there any liability that can we cause? I mean, I, Dave's got a good point. I just yeah. want to. And make I, I was sure. just bringing it up if it's an option to look into. It's public property. I, I thought that the sign was there so that vehicles didn't go down there. We don't want vehicles down no. there. But I don't see any reason why the public can't be down there. It's, it's but it's a, confusing because it says no river. I understand, but I think that was the intent because the, we didn't want vehicles. And certainly it'd be easy enough to stop vehicles. Uh, there even was a plan some years ago to put a walkway down there. Uh, I think the problem was they wanted to put too many trees and 
it would block the view. Right. I don't think we want to do that. But certainly there's no reason why pedestrians can't, it's a beautiful area, just go down there and they could sit on the wall and just look at the river. If there's, if it's something that you want to pursue, I would be willing to, you know, get a whole complete drawings and propose I'd like together. to make a suggestion that, you know, Jim, we take that sign down. You know, so just a thought. It was just, and a, and a lot of people have been asking, and I thought I'd check in. Well, I went by the other day, and there were people with cameras. I don't know if they were photographing things, and it's some of the people area. that are artists. Yes, a lot of the Stopped and said, are we allowed to go down there? And I said, yeah, it's public property. You can go down. So, you know, maybe the sign should come down. I agree with Betty. Maybe, Jim, take that down. Let's start with that. Right. And then, okay. Michael, maybe you could come up with a design with some benches and... Sure, sure, and even a path straight down. Just another area for people to sit, and, you know. No, I agree. Thank you for, you know, in any way that I, I'll work on, I'll wait to hear and then I'll work on that and oh, we could you. see how we can go with that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks. your time. Thank you, Michael. Okay. Uh, Herbie. I have one thing I want to bring up tonight, and that is that um, we've gotten preliminary of approval of another federal grant. Um, this, this grant would be for uh, 1,000 carbon monoxide alarms with 10-year batteries. This is the fourth grant we've gotten from the federal government, two for fire, fire uh, for smoke alarms and two for uh, carbon monoxide alarms. The total value of the project so far has been 97000 $100, wow. of which the federal government has given us $92,353, and the boroughs had to put up $4,700 in order to do that. So uh, once we, uh, we haven't gotten the official award yet, but all the preliminary stuff is in place. The program is going to target what we initially did, and that is residents that have small children, elderly people, those with disabilities, and those with heart and lung conditions, because they're most affected by carbon monoxide. Okay. Um, and just two, two more things. One is that um, right now with summer storms going on, sometimes we, we have power failures. People uh, fire up their portable generators. It's important if you're trying to use a portable generator that you have it far enough away from your house so it won't be affected by carbon monoxide. The other thing is that generally we associate carbon monoxide concerns with our heaters. But in the last two months, we've had two carbon monoxide incidents with elevated readings in, in homes, and they were a result of their stoves. So it's something to keep in mind. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for Herbie? I, you know what? I have something. I was talking to Herbie, and um, we're having an issue at the firehouse. There are some signs there that are strictly for the firemen to come and park when they have a call, and people are not abiding by the signs, but they're also saying it's because there is no ordinance pertaining to it. I don't know if we could look into it or if there is an ordinance or if we can make an ordinance where people cannot park there if it's for strictly for the fire chief or the firemen because when they come to answer a call, they have to be able to park, jump in, and go, and they're not able to do that. They're being stalled because people just don't care. So I don't know, Bill, if there is an ordinance. We is can it a put yellow line, Harvey? It's a, it's a yellow line. I, I, I went through some correspondence I had. I forwarded to the mayor the other day. This issue actually probably goes back to 1972 that we've had on and off issues with parking. Um, the borough at one point took out some of the meters that were on Wood Street. They painted yellow lines. They put the signs up. Apparently, some people had gotten tickets. They went to court, and in, at court, I guess they checked the ordinances for parking. And when they found out that those areas were not designated to the, for the fire companies, um, the people just decided to start parking there, and that's that's what we're going through now. Talking about Wood Street? Yeah. Wood Street, and then there's an area on Market Street yeah. also. Let me check what we have. Okay, appreciate that. We don't want to be in a position where guys are showing up for fire for an emergency, a medical emergency or something, and they've got to try and ride around the block looking for a parking space. Absolutely. Any questions for Herbie? That's all I have. Chief. It's summertime. Uh, I thought you were going to start singing summertime. Oh. Yeah. Everybody in the room knows we had some high profile criminal mischief go on, some graffiti and tagging that. Uh, we took care of that through uh, a quick investigation. That went, went very well. We also had some criminal mischief on Buckley Street through a vehicle. Um, a 
unfortunately we had to take into custody an 11 or 15 year old that were wandering around at one o'clock in the morning and doing this kind of stuff. Um, but on a positive note, the officers had visited over at the Snyder Girardi uh, Elementary School with the summer camp program. Um, Kilo was over our canine, about four or five guys off duty came over and met with the kids. And we take advantage of those programs really getting out there, uh, having an opportunity for the police officers to meet with the kids on a positive atmosphere. Uh, so we're continuing that. Unfortunately, last month, as Herb knows, we the month of July there was 32 overdoses. Wow. So we're continuing that battle. You know, that opioid battle is huge. Um, we're trying to be as aggressive as we can. We've made uh, numerous possessions arrests, but we want to take it to the next level. So we're trying to come up with some games plans with the newly formed narcotics unit strike team that uh, District Attorney Matt Weintraub just put out. So that's on the uh, forward-looking looks. That's about it. I would like to say yeah. something. My daughter works for Century 21 at, at the school, and she told me that when the police came over, they were so good with the kids. The kids were, they really enjoyed it, and um, I want to thank you for that. That's that's really big for kids to It's our second see. year doing it. We really enjoy it. Um, yeah, she said it was amazing. She really enjoyed it. So, I mean, she enjoyed it, and she said the kids were, like, enthralled. They liked it a lot. We think so, it helps us as, as much. It, it as absolutely much does. Helps them. Meeting the kids and... You know they get they feel comfortable and with you and that's that's a great thing. Thank you. Anyone else have anything for the chief? I Betty? Do. Um, if we have a person since the street sweeper started that will not move their vehicle <laughs> and they get a ticket every week, every week, is there any other thing that we can do? That's a question. There's other. I'm asking can, whoever can answer. Yeah. We can keep issuing tickets. We can't seize somebody's property. Yeah, I don't want them to be seized, but I want them to be reminded that for the for the they cleanliness the, of the neighbor, it, right? you know what I mean? If it was in front of my house and I want to clean up, move your car. We just had this conversation. It amazes me the amount of people that come in here and would rather pay, pay the, the ticket, ticket than, than move, move their the car. car. It's just it's ridiculous. Close to 100, 100 a, every time we do the sweeper, oh. so almost 200 a week. Crazy. Is there anything? Um, Billy, or can you look into What's it? What's the question? The question is that someone body to move their car. Well, it's not an abandoned. It's not considered an abandoned vehicle, no, so we can't go that point. way. They just choose to leave it there every week. They and just choose to leave it there. Yeah. I'm not sure we can. I'll look into it. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know because. Which exact one are you talking about? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> we just want to be able to clean. There's cobwebs now on the tires. Like, come on now. <laughs> Anybody else have anything for the chief? That's it for me. I would just a couple things. One, I want to thank you for providing your guys during the week at the St. Anne St. Mark's Carnival. Uh, what's his name? Levinsky? That's Mike, Mike. Mike Levinsky. He did a great job. He was very sociable. People loved the guy. We even had him draw the, the winning ticket for the 50-50. <laughs> And I also thought it was a great honor that the district attorney came and visited St. Anne's, uh, St. Anne's St. Mark's Carnival uh, to come down and take us take the time out to come to Bristol and really mingle with a lot of people. I mean, I thought that was in the 20 some years I've been doing the carnival, I have never seen anybody come down besides Fitzpatrick's and Tomlinson's and Galloway's that normally visit. And I a lot of people spoke about how honored they were that the district attorney came to Bristol and 90% of the people complimented him on how great of a job he did with that major case. I mean, coming in new and handling a high profile case like that, and he really did do an outstanding job. So if you want to pass it on that, a lot of people really felt honored that he attended the carnival from town. I also want to thank the chief. I came into town today as the Grundy Library was letting out. And, and literally the streets were packed up and down Radcliffe Street with cars and, and people. And there was a nice police presence there that your guys were doing a good job with traffic control and just the pedestrians walking. And it was a nice event. And I, I saw quite a few out-of-towners. And I know it was nice. I know they felt good. And 
that, that people were telling them where, you know. Yeah, they were a little bit overwhelmed. I think we were too. No, nobody really thought that. There were there were over a thousand people well, there. Well, three hundred people. There. there was over a thousand. Twenty three hundred. Yeah. Twenty three hundred. Yeah. I thought you said three hundred. I'm like, and they only had three hundred three hundred and fifty glasses. But people stayed, and they worked together. People were giving each other glasses, and um, your your uh, new police officer was there, and he was telling people. Now we might have a problem. There's only 350. Like he's talking real nice, you know. It was really good, really good. So. Thank you. It's Lorraine. What do you have? Is that it, Chief? Yes, sir. Lorraine. Thank you. I just want to talk about all the positive things that are happening in our town. Um, first of all, I worked at the fair uh, as I do most years, and um, the way St. Mark's and St. Anne get together as a group and the extended family that we have. Um, Michael, you are an amazing asset to our town. The way you, you help with many things. You and you and Ron are just the best. And we really appreciate you being here and everything that you do. Um, but I, this is fair and I, if it wasn't for Ralph Di Giuseppe, and we sh it should be known that this man works tirelessly for this this to go through. And he needs to have the accolation that he deserves for this. I mean, people don't realize, the kids that are there, and every year they enjoy it, and it, it, like if it wasn't there, they would miss it. So I want to thank you for everything you do. And, and not, only, not only that, the amount of people that are working there is it, it is because of you. They're your friends and your extended, we're extended family. And it, it's just a wonderful thing. Um, I can't tell you how, how proud I am to be a part of this group because, you know, all of us, and I don't mean just us, all of us are working as one to make this town a great, great place. And, um, I'm so excited because we're going to have a bakery. We haven't had a bakery in years. Um, the barbecue place, awesome. I mean, I, I just, I be, it started with the docks, which that's another thing Ralph should get credit for. Um, and I don't think he gets enough credit. I really don't. I think people uh, tend to, you know, throw stones and they shouldn't because he is an amazing Man, I know what he works. I know how hard he works. I know what he does. I know how he gets something in his head and it gets done. And also our police department with this new chief has been amazing. And I know you don't have that many guys. I know what, what you're working with. And I really appreciate it. Um, and of course, our fire department is incredible as well. Now, I was down at the river one, one night for the fireworks, Merle Winslow was down there taking care of everything. And um, they had music piped in. And you, it was so cool. Like, people were like, wow, there's music down here. This is an awesome thing, you know? Like, and there were a ton of people down there, and I've never seen it like that. And, I, and you were amazing. You did a lot of work. I know you did. And I want to thank you for that as well. Um, I know. And also with our new mayor, um, this town is just moving, moving in the in the right direction. I, you probably are sick of hearing me now, so I'll stop. But I love Bristol Borough. I love it. We all love it, and we're just going to keep moving forward. Thank you. Uh, it is amazing. I mean, thank you. Uh, it is amazing that how many people say years ago. Bristol wanted to be like New, New Hope, or Bristol wanted to be like Yardley. Believe it or not, a lot of people right now want to be like Bristol. Uh, I can because we're better than all of them. So we are <laughs> Dave, what do you got? Yeah, um, you. Uh, last week, uh, Mr. Dillon took the time out from his busy schedule to come over to the North Ward. Uh, we took a ride around. Uh, Mr. Dillon uh, took pictures, uh, talked to uh, some residents about their concerns. And just uh, would like to say how appreciated that was by by the residents and myself. 
And that's all I've got. Uh, Joanna Snyder could not be here tonight, but she was contacted by the uh, people that have the SS Mirwald, which is a schooner owned by the state of New Jersey. It's a teaching, teaching vessel. It's an oyster schooner. Um, the Rotary Hat Club had been out on it a couple, couple times. Last year, Joanna scheduled the Rotary Club, and she also did a Raising the Bar cruise. Well, when they heard about the docks, they contacted her. And even though we're not in New Jersey, they, they said they would like to come and dock here, and maybe dock here overnight, so that the one day they can open it to the public, if people just want to see what it looks like, and then the next day uh, they could have their regular sailing uh, cruises, either chartered or public cruises. And also they do a seminar, and it's and, and I told Joanna maybe we could uh, find the funding to uh, have the kids from the high school, like one of the classes, to le to learn about oyster. We teach all about oysters soon, the history of oysters in the uh, in the Delaware Bay, and uh, I think it would be a, a good event, and they would be available then for public cruises, and also. Uh, if somebody wanted to charter it, they do several cruises in a, in a day. Um, they're going to be over in Burlington between the 7th and the 12th. And I don't know if they, we had the exact date yet. It was all according if we could do this. It's no charge to the borough. All they require is that there be parking, ample parking, which we certainly have, and uh, bathroom facilities, porta potties, and we. If they are there, I think we might just have to coordinate with the club. Uh, I don't know if they're ours or the Lions Club. No, no they're ours. They're ours. So, so that's uh, that's not an issue. Uh, but I think it was really it was really nice that here you have people on the river that, that spend their whole whole day on on the river, and they reached out to us to use our docks. So. Um, well, what I was thinking is there's so many requests coming into the borough. I mean, Jim's getting two or three a week that maybe we form, I form a committee of five or six, I don't know, five or six people and some outside people, you know, Michael, Peza, uh, and take this out of Jim's hands. I mean, he's got enough on his plate mm -hmm. and start, you know, seeing how we want to handle this. So. Why don't we? I know you'll sit on it. At, maybe Lorraine and Betty want to sit on it. Sure, cool. sure, whatever. See what we could do, and we'll talk to Michael. And because Michael had somebody, uh, Bill called me. He had somebody. So I think we we really need to get a handle on, and really plan for next year too, not just for the end of this year. So, what do you what do you think, Jim? I have no problem with that, but I think the council should authorize if they want uh, to allow this. What's what's it's the state ship in New Jersey or something? Yes, it's the, uh, what date's that, Louie? I have to get the exact date. They were going to be in Burlington between the 7th and the 12th. They're stationed out of Bivalve, New Jersey, down by I think it's down by well, Fort. You find out, and I, I think I, we I think put they on needed the to know. They tonight. needed to talk with us. I think they were going to come in if we would allow. You know, if we would approve this, I think they were, would come in like a day early. Like they'd come in in the 6th. And, and then go over to Burlington after the cruises were done here the next day. I can find out the exact dates, but they needed they needed to talk to someone here just to find and out. The sixth is on a Wednesday. a Wednesday. This is during a week they want to do it. Yeah, it's uh, right. Yes, because the fourth is Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. Well, They're going to be there. Whatever you, I mean, whatever you want to do to put this together. I mean, I'll try to coordinate. I, they need somebody to talk to there. I, I don't we know. We won't meet they, until after. Yeah, that's why I thought if we could get this out, maybe Merle, if Merle could, if we could meet with Merle with the people from there just as far as access. Okay. They said they would even open this thing up to the public to, to allow the people. All free of charge. Not the cruises, but when they're there docked, people can go on and off the boat. Good. I think the cruises might be $35 a head. Well, let's get some more information, and the, we'll give, 
Yeah, yeah, we could but how give will you, we approve it, though, before that date? Well, we can vote tonight to give yeah, them the authorization to organize this with the borough manager okay. of Merle, and if it makes sense, to do it. If not, okay. you know, we'll give you control over this. I mean, I've been on this out of Burlington, and it's, you know. I mean, if you want to take it on, I don't want to throw it in your no, lap. No, no, I, I would say. Uh, if you want to look more into oh, I, I it, think find out what's is, involved. And, I think this is, you know, this is a state. This isn't somebody who wants to charge us to come. It's, you know, this is a. So we make This is New Jersey, so I think it's it's nice that they're coming here. We'll make an agenda item to put you in charge of this to organize it, and if it goes or it doesn't go, you'll make the decision on this. Okay. Anything else? Uh, the only other thing, everything's been so positive. I hate to bring this up, but. <laughs> There's Don't. kind of been a, a, a tendency now that we have people leaving their trash cans in front of their house. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember some of my friends, you know, they lived in row houses. And they carried, you know, they made sure their, pack, their trash was packaged up and they carried it through their house, their house. Or they walked, you know, the three blocks around by the time you went out an alley and around. But you never left your trash in front of somebody, in front of your house, especially when you're, you know, if you're in a, in a row home. And a couple, it's, I've gotten come some comments from people, you know, on like small streets like Lincoln Avenue, and they're saying, you know, it's 90 degrees out and something, my neighbor leaves their trash there, it's like they don't care. But I've also been walking down Radcliffe Street and I see somebody moving their recycling can from the curb to in front of the, you know, in front of the, the stoop there. And I'm thinking, we're doing all this effort to make this town beautiful. We have people, Walking up and down, I, I, I told my wife, I feel like I'm in a resort town now on the weekends. <laughs> because true. there's so many people that I don't know now that are walking up and down the street and, uh, and they're enjoying our town. I just think this is something that we have to, Address. we have to renew. And it's not just, I don't think it's just tenants either. I think some of the owners too, they just get complacent. Everybody, I, know, It happens a lot on Mill Street as well. Yes. It really does. And I think we have to remind people that, you know, trash is supposed to go in trash cans. Yeah. And especially not white bags that the birds pick or the dogs that's right. pick. Through. That's right. So I think that's just one of the housekeeping issues that we need. Also, in some of our borough parking areas, okay. I now see who puts their, you know, somebody puts a jet ski there. And then somebody puts a boat. And then somebody puts a basketball court. And then somebody puts a cone. And before you know it, Half of the parking spaces are tied up, and I don't think that's, and, and I feel kind of remiss because this is one of the things that when I came on, I thought I wanted to address parking, but, you know, you get bogged down in so much other stuff that doesn't, you know, some important things and some not important things, but I think we've got to start looking at these parking issues on how we, you know, how we address it because I think it's, it's being, it's being abused now. So, uh, hate to throw a damper on it, but that's, that's my two things tonight. And again, uh, I heard that we had a very successful African American Day also on Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't get the chance to go, go down there. I was working the fair, but some of the people from the fair, from that event came up to, to St. Anne's to have their, have their dinner. And, and it was nice that they, you know, yeah. that they say we're here in Bristol and they, and somebody's told them at the fair to, to come up here for a sausage sandwich. So that's a good, it was a good night all the way around. So it's been a good, good six weeks in Bristol since our last meeting. Uh, thank you. Tony. Yeah, thank you. Um, I spent quite a, quite a bit of time down at the, uh, the docks. Um, um, I, I, I sent an email earlier in the week to Mr. Dillon. Um, so did, you know, um, the, the sign that we had down there stating the rules is down to the left. A lot of people... Um, it's pretty much at foot level. People walk by it, and I noticed the people that are working down there have to explain, go down, and get, go down and take a look. I was wondering, maybe you could get that brought up to eye level, maybe to the right hand side, or, or have it on both sides. They're already sides. working on moving them. They're, they're, they're not looking at them. They need to be up, up in the up air so everybody can right. see them. And also, I know, um, I, 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 unfortunately, I witnessed a couple incidents there that, you know, uh, we have our, our guys working down there, but there's nothing that says that they, you know, I don't think. They, they have no authority, I guess. I, you know, people are, you have no authority to tell me this, that, who are you, blah, 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 you know. So I don't know if we have something that would 
a ball cap or something. Or shirt getting cap. shirts made. Shirts, okay. That's, uh, and I, again, I'd just like to uh, give a big uh, thanks to uh, Raising the Bar, uh, Michael Gorman, Ron McGuckin. Um, the, the, the 300, uh, all of Mill Street looks great now. Uh, they kind of took the bull by the horns and went out and, you know, and spearheaded the, the power washing and the, the weeds that I've been complaining about for a long time. Um, and it really looks good. The, the 300 block of Mill Street looks the best, in, in my opinion, with a Center for the Arts, E Tree, um, and also um, uh, uh, Wendy and Charlie, who are the owners of 303. Um, Mill Street, right next to, to Ron. They also went out there and did a bunch of repairs for, for several properties uh, for the, uh, this, the sunken sidewalk, and it looks really great. I think and, uh, train pops should and train, get it. I just they should say. really get it. And down at the 400 block, train pops right on the corner. It just, mm -hmm. it just, you know, just They're shows. doing a beautiful job. So um, I'd like, like just give a um, big thank you to everybody. Michael, thank you. Um, I don't know if we want to consider um, maybe open, even the, having the docks open a little later. I know that there's some boaters come in and they're they're going to the King George and the Cantina, which are open later than our docks. Um, I know they've been um, they've been reminded by some of the officers down there that hey, you know, the docks close at 11 o'clock. I don't know if we want to consider keeping it open another few hours later. There are all the things that we formed the committee that we talked about, looking at the first year, reviewing. Okay you know, the pros and cons about what's going on. And then next year when we open up again to have all these things change, like even the rules, we started with a basic, you know, set of rules. Some things may be able to come off. Some things we might have to add. So we're just going to get input from everybody that's been, you know, either positive or negative and things like you said, you talk to people every night, whoever's down there and, you know, I think it, it's a learning curve for all of us. I mean, it's the first time we ever had river access. So I think we're all can, learning with this. Can I, can I add something? I'm sorry. There's a, you know when you come up the hill from um, where the docks are, you come up the hill toward Radcliffe and Mill, there's a, a stop sign, and it's not high enough. It tells you, like, to stop. And I saw somebody bang into it. Like, that's how bad it is with their head. And then um, also, I, I don't know what we could do about this, but uh, I saw a little girl almost get hit by a car that was crossing the street. I was wondering if there's any way we could put like a yield or I'm a gonna, stop sign. I got a whole thing to talk about with that. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and then um, what else did you say? Something else I was thinking. Oh, some uh, a boater told me this. Over the, I'm sorry, Ralph. No, Tony was talking. <laughs> you're, okay. you're not, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. You're I'm good, sorry. You're good. No, a boater told me this uh, while I was at a wedding, and this boater said to me, "We've been down on your dock, and we saw little kids on the dock getting off boats without life preservers." And they said that it's a known fact that kids must have life preservers even on the dock. So I don't know what we could do about that too. Sorry, I thought you were finished. Sorry. Right. Uh, that's fine. You know, you know, one of the, you know, one of the, one of the things that I, a woman went down there in a motorized wheelchair, went down the ramp, still yeah. figure eights down at the floating dock. Oh. And one of our guys had just come on duty and said, hey, you know that up there? She, she ignored him several times and, you know, and, you know, he persisted and she finally came up and she had a dog with her too. So we thought maybe she was kind of, you know, some kind of need, she was blind or something, but. Then she just came right up and just totally ignored everybody. And she was doing figure eights down there on the floating docks. And so it's just, um, I, like I said, I don't know, just identifying them, you know, that, that may help right. out. But that's, that's all I have. Thank you. Betty? Okay. With Tony, with the signs that he was talking about, um, I had the pleasure of going to Grundy Towers yesterday. They had their um, yearly picnic, and I went and sat with them. And they've been coming down on Sundays for the concerts. And they said that in the past there were signs with rules. I don't know, they, they thought there was one to the right, but we need to make sure there's a sign big enough because we have the kids on the scooters, we got the kids on the bikes, we got people walking their dogs without leashes. Like just a general park rule sign, not just for the docks. So I wanted to see if, I, I don't want to bombard it with signs and everything, but I want to make sure that when the seniors are down there, 
that they feel safe and that they can, you know, confront people and say, these are the rules, you're not allowed to do this. Right. So we need to look into that. Um, in October, the woman's place is going to come in and we're going to do the paint the town purple again. I don't know if you guys remember last year we put purple ribbons and went down the Mill Street rack like at certain streets and they represent, you know, uh, abused women. And we're also doing a candle visual. Um, when I have the exact date, I should have it by September. Um, there's going to be a candle visual and we're planning on doing it at the wharf. And then they're going to do like something with soft drinks and stuff like that, either at the theater or at St. Mark's. We're not, we haven't put it all out there yet, but we're working on that. Um, I got, I had the pleasure of bringing the kids from, it's called um, Children of God Summer Camp. On Friday, they came up here, they sat out here, and they were admiring our building and admiring what we do and how we got here and asking questions. And I had a great day with the kids here, and I'd like to thank them for asking me to meet them here. And I think they had met with the mayor and they had met with the police station also. So that was something that, you know, the kids really liked. And, um, The main that was replaced on Wood Street, I believe is just about done, and then they're gonna be paving the street. So hopefully that'll be done by the second week in September. Um, we're working on it, and that seems to be the goal. Uh, also, the bridge on Bath Street, which is constantly an issue. If we can get Paul Goslin's group to go out there and power wash it like they have in the past, it's really nasty and dirty underneath. But on the right side and the left side, there's a lot of trash. So I don't know if SEPTA's going to come in. And I know in the past I think they did, but I don't know if we did it or they did it. But if we can look into that. Also, when you apply for a handicapped parking spot, and we give you a handicapped parking spot, the rules are if someone else comes in and has a placard and they park there, there's nothing we can do. They're entitled. So I want people to understand, and I believe I talked to Carol, part of their packet has a little piece of paper in there that states that other people with the placard can park there too. What's happening is if people are parking there, they're calling the cops, and the cops have to go out and address these issues, and it's unfair to the police because they have other things more important than to go watch two neighbors fight about whose parking spot it is. It's not anybody's particular parking spot. We just try to help you by putting that so that you have a spot to park because you are handicapped. But we cannot control if other people use it and they have placards. So I just wanted to make that clear because I know Carol showed me the note that's in the package that they get. Well, from what I understand, and maybe the solicitor could correct me if I'm wrong, it's a public street. Yes. So when you put a handicap sign up, although you requested it, Right. We don't have a right, and Chief, I don't know, maybe you could answer their ability. We don't have a right to tell somebody else that parks there, you can't park here because exactly. it's a designated spot. It's not your spot, it's a handicapped parking place. Am I correct, Mr. Solano? You're correct. Okay. I just wanted to put that out there because some people don't seem to remember that, and then they think it's their parking spot, and they're calling the police station, and cops are going out there, and it's, you know, not fair to the police because this is something that, you know, it's the way it is, period. You're lucky you have it. Um, also, obviously we have issues in town with, like Louis was saying about the trash cans and stuff like that. I think it's a lot for Joe and John, and I really, really would like to see us bring back Kevin Brannigan part-time or give Mr. Dillon the permission or whatever he needs from us that if he sits down and talks to Kevin and Kevin doesn't want to come back part time, that we hire somebody to help. Now, we're, we've done so much to make this town so much better, but there's just a lot. It's overwhelming for Joe, it's, and John's got his hands full, and we just need to have somebody that can get out there and, and just little things like the trash cans. People don't seem to want to abide by the rules, so sometimes we have to reinforce them, and I just think it's necessary. Did we just approve that last month to, to hire another part-time? We just voted on it last month. I don't, 
if we talked about it. I don't know if we talked about it, but I don't know if we voted on it. I think we're going to. Is that added to the agenda or smart? All right, well, then guess what? Then we don't have to add it. We got to make sure because I just think we need somebody else to help out. So, Dave? Yeah. I, I just wish we would talk about personnel in the back. Uh, I, I don't like mentioning anybody's names ever. You know, I'll say a resident or a person. Uh, um, I, I, I think council should not name names, okay? So, and if you want to name names, name them in the back. All right, and that's fine. That's your opinion. But my opinion is that we need someone like it, Kevin. It, if we don't hire Kevin, it's we a need rule. to hire you should, somebody. You shouldn't name well, names We're not discussing in personnel. We're discussing. It's embarrassing. And I don't think so. Let me, just, let me just try to clear this up. So, are we making this an agenda item, or is it already been... I think it's established that I, I don't remember. I don't remember either. Brittany, do it's you have any? We voted on it last month. It's here. Okay. So what does it say? It says a motion to approve the hiring of an additional part-time code, code enforcement officer. Okay, good. Right. Unanimous. Good. All right. All right. So then the manager has the authorization to bring back who he wants. Is yes. That? Yes. Do we have any? Uh, do we have any applicants? I'm not sure. Why I asked like a week and a half or so ago, I I sent an email to Mr. Dunn just asking you know, if we had hired anybody at this point, and the answer was no. So. No, we didn't hire anybody. No. All right. So why don't we? Why don't we? You have the authorization. Let's bring a couple people in. If there is an applicant, if not, let's get our former inspector in here, sit down with him, and see how we're going to move forward with this. No, that's it. That's it. All right, I just have a couple things. One, uh, talking about the docks, and I've been down there also a lot. I've seen Tony down there a few times. When you come, me, Tony, Betty, Jim, and a couple people, we walked, I forget who else was there. We walked Mill Street for some other issues, mm -hmm. and we walked down at the wharf. And we met at the wharf because we're going to redo it. But when you come down the hill along Stocks, King George is on, you're coming down Mill Street, you want to go down the hill. When you get to the bottom of that hill and you have to turn right, if there's a car coming from the parking lot to come up the hill, it's a total traffic jam. Yeah, it is. So you can't mm -hmm. make the turn. It's, it's been congested. And we also talked to Kurt about doing some kind of traffic study there with pedestrians crossing, like Lorraine said, you got it's a it's a bad intersection. Here. Even the chief agreed that something has to get done with that intersection. Am I right, Chief? Yes. Okay. So Kurt's doing. I don't know if he's he's done or he's completed some kind of sketch. But what I'm recommending is when you come down the hill and you turn right, there's an area of grass there that we own. I think we take that grass area out, and I, I talked to Kurt, and extend that road. So that road would now become double wide or triple wide. Hash mark along the river now where there's no parking, nobody can go there. And you'll, that flow of traffic is going to move so much better. So right now we got Kurt looking into all this. Mm -hmm. Again, we got to find the money to do it. I mean, we're not going to just, you know, but I just want council to know that we are working on that entire intersection on top of the hill, crosswalks. I don't know what we need to do, but as far we as, went as far as Market Street around the theater. I, if you, yes. I, I wanted to ask a question about this. Now, on, when Mill becomes Radcliffe, that's where I'm talking about. Yeah, right. That's where we're we have to get the state involved to get mm -hmm. put a stop sign yes. there? Well, we don't know if it's a stop sign. Well, something. Something has to be there. Well, that's what we're saying. We're having a traffic study done. It's dangerous. And also, when you're coming down Rackliff and you make the right on the market, mm -hmm. it's insane right there. Yeah. So I do. I sit a lot at the uh, cantina, yeah. and I see a lot of. So when there. will? I mean, Kurt's in the other room because there's they got a major meeting tonight. Yeah, Tony. A question regarding that going going down towards the, the wharf area. I know there's yellow lines down there, and people continue they, they, they park along there. We have to enforce that that there's no parking, especially on that on that right hand side. 
That's what, true. That kind of, actually, that kind of comes out a little bit. You know, I don't know if just coming in three feet and rounding that corner would alleviate some well, of that. Well, that's why we're going to let him come up with is a Is there going to be a play. sidewalk there? Like, There'll still be a sump, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would but think. In the meantime, you already be. forced the, you know, the, the yellow line. You shouldn't have anybody parking there, especially, especially if you make the right hand on the opposite side as well. There's yellow all along the, you know, the. But that there. ground that's there to me, I mean, I think widening and making the street wider because. is really going. And then when you set up for the events. You could set up, and I talked to Merle about this, and he agreed. Mm -hmm. You could set all the vendors yeah, that's along good. the right side mm -hmm. so that you could view the river. I mean, you don't have to block the river with trailers. Well, though. definitely, because so, right now it's a dead piece of ground anyway. There's nothing going on Tony, there. are you referring to on Mill Street? No, where he's the new, referring down at the bottom. Where the new building the new is? Building. No. Okay. Yeah. Right, as you, right, right as you go down on the right right hand side. Where the on mill, right? Yeah. No, no. As you go down. Mill. The part we're talking okay. about down okay. in the parking lot. I know, I know you were talking about that, but I thought he was referring to something else. No. No. Because there are a lot of people park right on that right side. Oh, yes. Correct. I think that mill, and I don't know if that's legal or not. But it's all yellow lines, yellow lines, so nobody should be parking there anytime. That's, that's, so yeah. I'm hoping to have something for September's meeting for everybody to look at. Thank you. At one time, this is before I was on council, but when I was secretary, they talked about they talked about the brick crosswalks mm -hmm. that almost get applied to the over top of your blacktop. Mm -hmm. You could stamp the blacktop. Uh, but I think there's also stuff now that. that Applies right to your like you have an existing road instead of cutting it out, they heat it down and press it down. It's got the white lines on it and it's bricks. I think something like that would really look nice oh. down at the you know down yeah, the up on Mill Street. I don't even know if you have a crosswalk from the Cantina yeah. over to the King George, which I think is mm -hmm. no. you know. Yeah. And we need that, that was in the plan. I, I saw yeah. the preliminary sketch that was that was all addressed in there. Good. Good. For, for what we're talking about now? Yes. So we already have something? Because I haven't seen any of it. He wants to meet and discuss. Okay. I haven't seen it. A lot of that is addressed. I haven't seen it. There's another place where crosswalk on Bass. There's no crosswalk on Bass and Otter. There's a crosswalk across Bass Street. Right. To the but there's no crosswalk over to Otter Street. Yeah. And it's a wide, so you don't know, there's not a crosswalk on either side of it. So theoretically, you're looking to go up to Mill Street to make a crosswalk, which nobody's going to do. So we either have to pick one side or the other and put, put a cross, you know, just paint it on there, yeah. just to, especially when school starts, because there's kids, Absolutely. there's kids on the other side of Otter Street that walk mm -hmm. down that way, yes. and they have to cross over. Mm -hmm. right. so I think we need, to, we need to look at some of these, especially down at the river, because I know for a fact that anybody coming this way, and like Tony said, if there's a car there or even a truck, you cannot make the right-hand turn. So something has to change there. So I didn't know. That. I'll look at the sketch. I've been and with we the carnival. Of I didn't have a chance to. But on the King George side as well, I don't know if that's yellowed out. But maybe we should restrict parking from there all the way down. Except these cars coming out and make a wider turn, coming up to Mill Street, coming from the parking lot. So I, I think make a wider left turn. It's a shame to lose those spaces there. It's like three spaces. But it's a lot. No, yeah, I, I know. To but take them away, that's a lot. Well, that's, that's well, why we got an engineer, because when they put it down, they're liable. They're, you know, they're, so let's see what, I'll look at it too. The other thing is, uh, everybody knows I purchased that property on Market Beautiful. Street. Yes. I'm Beautiful. redoing it. I'm going to put all new sidewalk in. So I know there's been talk about a kiosk somewhere. So I don't know if the borough, I mean, at my expense, I'll take all the meters out, I'll fix everything. And if you want to start with that area, that's fine. That's if a great not, idea. Put the meters in, but I mean, I would, you know, I'm going to be putting sidewalk in, so I'll do all that at my expense. It's a matter of how you guys want to handle it. But a lot of people are talking and it, it's not good, but they want to put meters all the way down to Cedar Street because a lot of people are just parking their cars there for two, three days at a time, and it's it's really not fair. So 
a kiosk works, and the reason it works, I just went to a wedding in uh, Asbury Park. Mm -hmm. You put your money in the kiosk, when you leave, let's say you got two hours, you leave in 20 minutes, that next car that comes in has to pay again. It's right. not like you look at the meter and there's an hour and a half left on it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good idea. Again, I'm, I'll do all the sidewalks on at my expense. If you want to try one there, all you do is number the spots and you see how it works out. So it's something that you could think about. The other thing is September 9th is the Mill Street Run. A grade school race starts. It's a 1.55 miles. It's for first through eighth grade. Starts at 10.30 a.m. And then there's a kids dash, 2.5 blocks. I think I'll run in that. <laughs> Michael, we can run in that. Up to six years old. And that starts. Bring the paddles. That starts at 10.35 a.m. So the race starts and ends on Mill Street. Uh, all the participants are free. You need a parent or guardian must register the children the day of the race. And John Mundy's been running this. This is the 50th year for the Mill Street wow. Run. So mm -hmm. you got it. That's awesome. He was supposed to be here this evening, but I want to thank him for putting 50 years into something like this. And it's very successful. So they have the kids dash. They have the, the 1.55 mile run. So it's a good day. Come out and support it, even if you don't run in it. And uh, I think that's a, oh, I have one other thing. I talked to council in executive session this evening about retaining a, another attorney, a special counsel for the borough. And uh, they all agreed that this is the direction they want to go in. So I'm going to put on the agenda tonight to hire Chris Gerber from Siena uh, Belvoir and Associates. I think Chris is a very competent attorney. Uh, and I think. Gerber. Okay. Like Gerber food? Okay. <laughs> Gerber babies. <laughs> Wishes the other daddy wouldn't be here. <laughs> but uh, again, I think it's uh, the right move for the borough to hire another uh, attorney for special counsel. So that'll be also on our agenda tonight. And I think that's all I have. Joe, do you have anything? Yeah, I have a couple things. Uh, let's see. The, uh, of course, Council took a lot of the items I'd like to talk about, but uh, sorry, that's okay. The, um, as Chief Henry mentioned, uh, we've increased uh, a lot of our patrols also too, as a direct result of that. We're having more arrests and more uh, citations to the extent that I know everybody gets these uh, police reports and fire reports. I just want to go over just a couple things. Uh, we're already up to 134 arrests uh, in 2017 compared to 2016. We only had, not only, but we had 73 arrests. Uh, Buck County call for service, that's the number of calls. We're averaging about 1,700 calls a month. We're already over 12,000 calls uh, this year. I know we, we talk a lot about traffic also and our concerns. I'm glad council's moving ahead. Uh, I know, as council pointed out, about the concerns of crossing uh, Mill Street and Rackford Street in front of the theater. Chief and I have discussed that, and we've had our two cents in, on that input. Um, traffic citations for 2017, 379 so far this year. Uh, last year we did 454 total, so oh. I think we're going to surpass, surpass that. We did 123 traffic citations in the month. We normally average 54. Um, traffic offenses, 111 for speeding. I know it's a major concern. Various members of council have approached myself or the chief or spoke about this. Um, it's, it's something that we're focusing on. Uh, traffic control device, another 95 citations were issued. Unregistered vehicles, and this generally only happens uh, on the observance of our police officers, either in passing vehicles or on uh, stops. They pick up the vehicles not registered, 138 of those. 
So I just wanted to bring that you know, to our attention. Overtime, uh, we're still under budget, from what I can see, for the first seven months. The, um, as the chief mentioned, we took in a subject on Mill Street, Mill Street Graffiti, a couple different locations. We've made a couple arrests on um, graffiti, and then you know we're part of the uh, tag group, which is Towns Against Graffiti. The chief gets on the horn pretty quickly, and, and they come out and, and remove that graffiti. Um, again, the chief mentioned about the uh, officers visiting the 21st Century Summer Camp Program. All this is part of what we call our community policing with the bicycle patrols, getting the officers out there. Uh, they also, for the past nine weeks, our officers have had breakfast every morning with the uh, children of God's Nursery School. And again, Betty met with them and pointed out that, that I had met with them. Um, relative to the police department, or I'm sorry, fire department, I want to commend Chief Slack on that uh, fourth federal grant. Awesome. I don't think anybody in, in the state of uh, Pennsylvania has been so successful oh. in getting these grants for, for our citizens. They end up getting free detectors. I think also, Chief, we still have some smoke detectors yes. left and the fact that we put them in at no cost. According to the fire department, again, you know, a lot of times I think people just think that, you know, our guys sit in the firehouse, you know, and they're doing nothing, they're playing car, playing pinochle, you know, watching the TV. Last month, we responded to uh, so far this year, we've responded to 181 medical calls. So far this year, we responded to 352 total alarms. So better than half of our emergency calls are medical calls. I think the chief pointed out that uh, we had 32 opioid overdoses, and they're a, a large part of that. So our, our fire department is getting quite a workout. As I said, they're already up to 352 alarms uh, this year. Just checking here. Oh, finally, the uh, Advisory and Oversight Committee of the 21st Century uh, Learning Center group having our annual movie night this Friday night. It's um, The Secret Life of Pets. It's free. We have uh, free popcorn, free uh, cold drinks. The uh, movie will start right around dusk or say a little bit after 8, but around 7 o'clock we try to get everybody to come down and and register if they can give us their email or not. But the whole night is free for them. What's, the date? Thank What's that date? This Friday, the 20, okay. was it 25th. Okay. Um, so I want to thank the Burr. They're one of our sponsors, as well as uh, Wawa and ShopRite. And who else? They'll come to me later, I'm sure. And I want to thank the cooperation that I've gotten from the council so far this year. I greatly appreciate it. That's it. Ralph, do, when is um, the uh, do-up this year? Third Saturday in September. And Ooh. also, um, my partner on council, Greg Pezza, is at the Bucks County Community College. He has a mandatory meeting. He teaches there. So I don't want anybody to think, you know, he's shirking his responsibility. And also, I want to... Uh, make it, put a shout out about his restaurant, which is really wonderful. I forgot to mention it when I mentioned the other stuff, and I don't want to short him because it's an amazing restaurant. Sorry. Uh, after the regular council meeting, I have a packet for you about the, uh, the budget for 2018. Uh, we have the actuals as of the end of June of this year. And, uh, working with the various departments uh, uh, for their needs uh, and uh, items that uh, you feel you, you know, you'd know like to have programmed into the budget for capital improvements, let us know. But we'll have that packet at the end of the regular meeting for you. Uh, the bids for the uh, electrical work at the wharf came in extremely high. It's recommended that those bids be rejected by council so we would like that motion uh, this evening also and i believe that's it in terms of uh what 
we need from council to vote. <coughs> Bill, you have anything? No. All right, so before we go right into our regular council meeting, does anybody have any agenda items, Lorraine, besides what we discussed? Um, I just wanted to talk about, um, we want to, I want to get together with um, the uh, school district and try to work out something, maybe putting basketball courts on uh, the property at Snyder Girati and uh, instead of where they are right now and maybe, um, you know, we could do half if you guys would be interested and they could do the other half. We could do lights and everything in that if they, I, I would like to get a meeting with them that's all, and, and just at least start discussing it. So but you're saying, I and know I would, we'll, we'll try to raise money to get it. I know you've been pushing the blacktop over here. I know, but I, I, I just think it would be better to be at Cider Girati. It would be better for the kids that are already there. Um, it would give them another activity at their gym time. And uh, I just think it would be better to be at the school property. Right. So, I mean, I've, I've really been thinking about it and I, and, um, you know, it would be a nice idea for it to be there. I, I believe that they'll get more use out of it there. I'll have Jim contact them, see if they're interested. Okay. Anybody else have any agenda items? Dave? Anything for the agenda? No. Louie? Tony? No. Eddie? I have a few here, but we'll go. I'll read them to Brittany so she could. You want them, Brittany, you want her to make the motion or do you want it? It's part of the regular meeting. She'll pick them. She'll pick them up as part of the regular meeting. I don't remember what I gave you. I gave you Chris Gerber. I have them here. Oh, you have them all? Yes, sir. Good. You could be our motion person tonight. All right, so we're ending this meeting to go right into our regular voting meeting. One question. We're going to um, vote to put Louie in charge of organizing. The ship. What's the name of the ship? Yes, that's Mirwalk. M-E-E-R-M-A-L-E. Mirwalk. Sounds like the uh, Dancing with the Stars thing. Right? Doesn't it? Yeah. Do we win the mirror ball? I think they win the mirror ball. Well, that. this is a mirror wall. Mirror wall or mirror ball? Yeah, I will. I'll do the motions. Yeah. I mean, the uh, approvals, I mean. All right. Acceptance. Let's go. Lorraine, start with Ms. you. Mr. President, I'd like Wait, to make a motion. Oh, 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 oh. Recess. Two minutes. Two minutes. Let's hurry it up, guys. Men can't hang. Bye, honey. Thank you. You two? You two? That corner killed you. You're good. You're good. Um, I think you should talk to them about your plans. I understand something. That's something. See you soon. Bye. You're the best. How you doing, Carl? Carl, that was so nice down the river with the with the fireworks. That was awesome, and Neil Diamond was awesome. I got to get this out of my CD and try it on that day. We loved it. Everybody loved it. It was perfect. Great job. And that sound system was incredible. The, the, with the crown and the bridge and the accent and the bridge. That's good. I was thinking, like on Sunday night, we stay after the concert. We the sit there. It's so nice out. And when the music stops, it would be nice to have. You know? Uh, yeah. It's very good. It's great. You'll get a little bit more. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mr. President, I'd like to make a motion to approve the council minutes of 71017 to accept the treasurer's report for June 2017, to accept the police and DJ's report for July 2017, to accept the fire chief's report for July 2017, to accept the inspection department report for July 2017, and to accept the public works department report for June and July of 2017. I have a second. Second by Ms. Rodriguez. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'd like to make a motion to reject the bids for the electrical work. It was high. Second by Mrs. Collum. Questions or comments? Uh, Kurt's not in here again. He's in the planning meeting about Mill Run. So I, we've got to really look at what we're doing down there. And figure this out. I mean, uh, we're You're not going to we're not going to spend a few hundred thousand dollars in electrics. Like no, electric it's crazy. Board. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to author authorize a final release of escrow in the amount of four thousand five hundred eighty-three dollars and seventy-nine cents to the Goodwill Fire Company. Second. Second. Second by Mr. Catrocci. Questions or comments? You want to come? Anybody want to explain what we're doing? This is just a final <coughs> escrow release for the uh, improvements that were made at the firehouse during their construction. Uh, the engineer feels you can release it ahead of time. There's usually a waiting period, but uh, everything's been done to to the engineer's standards. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'd like to make um, accept a proposal dated August 21st, 2017 from Sienna Bell War as the borough special counsel, which would, you know, include us being served by Chris Gerber. Second by Mrs. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I'd like to have Louis Catrocci organize with the people that need to recognize the SS ship Mirball. I have a second. Second by Ms. Collin. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Oh. A motion to grant. I, I'd like to make a motion to grant to request for a 90-day extension of time to November 22, 2017 on the waiver of land development for 200 Howe Street for the new loading dock construction. I have a second. Second by Mrs. Collin. Any questions or comments? <laughs> it's a formality, I guess, on this. It's an extension. It's a time extension. The developer's not ready. Is that the first building on the house? Yes. Questions or comments? All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Do we have anything else? I feel like we're missing something. We got the Mill Street run. Oh, the other thing I is, did. the other thing is our meeting will not be on the, I think it's the third, that's sort of fourth is Labor Day. Right. So we'll just meet on September 11th. We'll have one meeting okay. and then we're going to start with budget meetings and all that. So we have a lot of stuff to discuss. Okay. Okay. And then starting October, we'll go back to our normal. Is that okay? Or is there anybody, anybody that's opposed? Fine. That's only great. One that's meeting? great. I love it. 
So Fine. we'll go with September 11th at 7 o'clock. Okay. Great. I get a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. By the rain second by the